Hey everyone, welcome back to Diabetic Savvy. We have got a great video and recipe adaptation today for you. We are adapting the classic Madeleine French Petite Cake Cookie to be diabetic friendly. You're gonna absolutely love this recipe, so stay with us. Madeleine cookies are one of my top favorite cookies, and I like them because they're so unique. They're not really a cookie at all. They're in fact a little petite yellow French cake. We've been working on this video for well over a month now, and really the challenge came down to substituting ingredients in a combination of ways that maintained that really light, delicate texture of the original cookie. We think we've got it. I'm so excited about today. This recipe is one of those few recipes that we have that requires specific tools. And namely, we're talking about this pan. This is a Madeleine cookie pan. So this is one thing that you will need. Everything else that we're talking about, you can make this recipe either by hand or with a stand mixture like we have here. All right, let's jump into the recipe. The first thing that you need to do is preheat your oven to 375 degrees and have your rack right in the middle of the oven. That's to prevent any burning on the underside. And we'll talk about that being one of the most important parts of this process is pan preparation in just a few seconds. So this recipe is made essentially in three different steps. The first part being creaming the butter. Now, if you notice here, this butter looks kind of like grated cheese. Well, I like to grate my butter if I want to accelerate the warming process. Room temperature butter is really important to speed this process up when you're making this recipe. So this is five and a quarter ounces of room temperature softened unsalted butter. And we're gonna go ahead and put that into the mixer and we're gonna whip that by itself until the butter becomes really light fluffs up and almost becomes like a white color. And now that we're done with our butter, we can move on to our second step. And that is blending together the eggs and the sugar substitute. Today we're using three whole eggs, two egg yolks, and three quarters of a cup of Splenda. And you wanna keep whisking your eggs and your sugar substitute together until you come to the ribbon stage, like so. When you get that one long strand, we've talked about riveting before, it's a really important indicator that your eggs and your sugar substitute are fully combined together. So now very slowly combine our eggs and our butter mixture together until they're fully combined. And when you're at that point where it's light, fluffy, and almost all the lumps are gone, you can turn off the mixer and let it relax for a minute. Next, we're gonna sift together our flour blend and our baking powder. We're gonna be using two ounces of traditional cake flour, and then two and three quarters ounces of carbolous flour, and then three quarters of a teaspoon of baking powder. I'm gonna let all of you in on a little secret. I never truly appreciated the value of sifting together flours and until I started working with alternative flours. Please don't skip that step. It makes a huge difference in your final product. And now we're gonna combine our flour and baking powder blend together into our egg and butter mixture a little at a time just to make sure that it fully incorporates and continues to break up any of those last remaining bits of butter. And just make certain during the last part of mixing that you give the bowl and the paddle a really good scrape just to make sure that you fully combined all of your ingredients. And now that our batter looks like this, we can add our vanilla. And then we're gonna give this one quick mix to blend in all the vanilla, and then we're gonna let our batter rest for 30 minutes. And don't worry, I haven't forgotten about the milk. While our batter is resting, I wanted to talk to you about pan preparation, because this is such a critical step that so many people take for granted. And the last thing that you want are these wonderful, beautiful little cakes that you've worked so hard for to stick to the pan, and there's nothing you can do. So this actually involves a three-layer process. The first thing that I wanna do is by hand with some softened butter, butter all of our individual molds and be generous here. It's really important that you don't skimp on the butter because again, there's nothing you can do if your cookies stick at this point. And then once we have that butter really pressed into all of our molds, we can add the second layer, which is taking a little bit of carbolous flour and sprinkling it into each of the individual molds. And then you wanna evenly distribute that carbolous flour by just tapping the mold so that the flour sticks to all of the butter and make sure you evenly distribute that flour. You will thank yourself later. Again, this step is so critically important. Do not take this step for granted. All right. And that's what you're looking for. So now that our batter has rested, we can add our final ingredient and that's our milk. Carbolous flour absorbs a tremendous amount of liquid. 
So if you go with a traditional recipe and just swap out flowers, it won't work. It'll make it too thick. It just it, it doesn't provide the texture. So our three quarters of a cup of whole milk today will give us that viscosity and texture that we want in order to be able to maintain that traditional, really light, delicate texture that we're looking for. And when your batter looks like this, then you are ready to go. Now that our pan is fully ready to go, we're gonna be using a flat tip to pipe these cookies. Now, if you've made madeleines before, this batter is gonna seem really loose, and I, I get that. In fact, you're gonna to need to use your finger to hold the batter in the bag while you pipe it. And now they're ready to go into our preheated oven at 375 degrees for about 13 to 14 minutes. Our cookies have just come out of the oven and it's really important that while they are still hot, you take them out of the pan at that point. If you have prepared your pan properly, they should just fall right out. Well, these came out of the pan just as expected. One more thing that you can do if you want just a little bit more insurance is after you've laid the butter and then floured your pan, give it a really quick spray with some vegetable oil. I know it sounds like overkill, but again, you really want these to come out properly. Our Madeleine cookies are fully cooled and I am so excited. I mean, not a moment too soon. I am looking forward to these so much. Let's just talk about the texture really quickly. As I break this open, the first thing that you will see is that we have retained that really delicate cake-like texture. And you can see here by the plate that we've retained that classic Madeleine-like structure, and yet this is all diabetic friendly. Now for the taste test. Mm. So good. You get that nice delicate cake texture. Then you get that rush of the butter. Then you get hit with that vanilla. It's just amazing. Not too sweet. I mean, just really delicate, like a really good Madeleine cookie should be. These are a fantastic cookie, and I'm really, really proud of this recipe. We hope you've enjoyed today's video. We were so excited about bringing this to you. Please leave a comment and feedback to let us know if you'd like to see more of these types of videos in the future. And also, consider subscribing if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell so you can be made aware when new content is being uploaded to the channel. We'll see you in a few days with a new recipe adaptation or new food review, and in the meantime, take care of yourselves. Be healthy, be carp deliberate, and we'll see you soon.